And we are looking forward now to having our last, our final panel discussion. And it's about the next phase on I4MS and the history and where we are now and what the plans are. This is part of the discussion. And therefore, I would invite the panelists now to join me here on stage. And let us welcome Moritz Butter, Mats Lemke, Muriel Atan, Maurizio Gadilio, and Luigi Perisic. And I make the stage free here for Max. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I hear she's. Muriel could not be here because of a strike in Belgium. So, okay. So, Max, what do we have to know about these phases? I think it's the easiest for you to, to be here at the. Where is my. Uh, uh, it's this one? Yes. Just ah, okay. So, there we go. Yeah, I, I, I will not have too much to add, but when you look at the picture, I added one, one arrow up there, the pink one, and uh, that basically means we, you know, as a commission, we have usually to plan years ahead. So for us now is the planning next half year will be the planning of the program for 18, 2018 to 2020. So we have to get some ideas on, on what we want to what we want to do there. And I think we would follow from what Francesca has presented. And I would ask maybe some questions to you. We are in the planning phase, so I cannot tell what will come. I tell that that it would be I would assume we invest again in these kind of innovation up initiatives. We have to see whether we get the budget, but it doesn't look that bad. Uh, we have to we have to look into that, but we would not mind having your comments on that because it should be driven by you as a constituency of what you need. In particular, we usually we work very closely with the Factory of the Future Research Association, so we would also like to you. That's why Mauricio is, for example, on the panel. We would like to know what you want us to do differently or how we should call. And I would like to just bring up some of these questions that come up. So when you see the approach we have at the moment, we are focusing these networks, these projects, usually around one large group of technologies. You saw we have simulation and big data, uh, H HPC-based simulation and uh, analytics. We have uh, some kind of robotics. We have uh, cyber physical adoption of cyber physical systems and IoT. Should we continue that to call for these technology groups, or do you see this has proven so far to be okay? Because that was the kind of situation we were in. We thought that these are the big game changers for for that sector. But question is, should we do it like that, or do you do you see another way, like like more a regional approach, more a more national approach saying competence centers should address, be able to address all technologies. So that's the kind of question I would like to have comments. And I know that Francesca, will t Francesca and uh, Marcus will take notes of what you, what, you, what, you, what you tell. So we remember that when we get into that discussion. Another one is you see that the B in CPPS is a project that is based on a platform. It ba it's based on Fitman, on Feeware, so it's based on one platform, and it helps to spread the adoption of that platform. So we could envisage as well to say in one or the other area, it should be platform-based. We have a platform, and then these initiatives are used to get wide usage of that platform by innovate innovators. Yeah, so that's another thing that we could do mandatory, optional, not at all question mark yeah so I cannot tell now and then I put some questions down here just rem try to remember the questions. these we can leave on the other two I haven't on they came up during the meeting now yeah, because you also learn in these meetings when I hear your questions when I hear your comments now we have said already in phase three that 
we focus on EU added value. It says nurture the ecosystem, concentrate on EU added value. So that means how can we focus on EU added value? We say one thing, we want to have cross-border experiments, we want to support networking, but I would also say we have other schemes like Smart Anything Everywhere. Should we, how to better convert? Should we run them all separate or should, you, should we come together? I don't know. And how do we make a model sustainable? I mean, we saw a spin-off company coming out of s cloud SME. We see that, that Fortissimo had the second project now in. How do we make sure that the innovation hubs we once had stay, or maybe not stay, if that's not needed, they need not stay, but, but they should have the opportunity to stay if there is there's need, and, and there has to be other funding coming up for them to live. So there is a question on business models for these innovation hubs. How can they operate with less and less EU funding? Because you could, should see that EU funding is a bit also the startup of, of, of these networks. Yeah, so sustainability for me is linked to business models. Business, and that came up yesterday in the discussion as well. What is the business model for digital innovation hubs? And where do they get the funding from? Then also how to better root EU-supported hubs in national and regional infrastructures. We have said already that in, in, in the current call, we say basically between the lines that those who bring regional infrastructure or link very strongly into regional infrastructures have a competitive advantage. So we would like to see that and, and, and proposals who come with that they in one or the other way could. But could we go further and say we want to make it conditional? Only hubs who have local funding and have uh, rooted locally should make it because because we can only add value on a European scale. So if there's no local basis, maybe we shouldn't fund in future. Yeah. So that's 18 to 20. It's not the current call. I'm talking for the future. And how to use the EU funds then to better network these national and regional infrastructures? I think we don't want to go away from these concept of experiments because that brings the meat to the initiative. If we take these experiments out, it's a purely networking effort. And I don't think we want to go into the networking effort. Collaboration, you can only maintain if there is something you can collaborate on. And, and it should go beyond, I plan to collaborate on this. So we, want, we would still put money at collaboration. So the experiment concept, I don't think, should go at least from my point of view. How to pull resources from different funding programs. I mean, if you have local infrastructures that are there, they have to come from local funds. Sometimes in rich uh, regions, they come from wherever. In, in, in less developed regions, they could come from structural funds, for example. There's always the possibility of this Juncker innovation package that, that we have, FC, and then there are possibilities as well. And we have to see how we do that and how we orchestrate that because it's very difficult to get get into that and understand that and as an SME I think the innovation hubs the competence centers have to know how to do that there are many industry uh, labs popping up like I give you one example IBM is building an IOT lab in Munich that's known they have announced it publicly uh, on Watson related uh, around Watson yeah and uh, this is this is this are industry labs, and you see many others of them coming up. How do they come into this game, and how do we handle that? They often want to create business for their company. Yeah, so we have we have to be sure that we introduce some degree of neutrality in these in these in these setups because we don't want to become the machinery for creating business for, for big actors who have these labs. So we have to see how we handle that. Yeah, I had one of the cases in one of the other initiatives where we had to clearly take care. There's a good role for the big companies who often also hear Siemens does so and so on. They have platforms. So we, we, they could bring in their platform. So if you have a proposal that's based on platforms, we still want to make sure that this is not just their pre-sales their pre support. Yeah? So we have to see how we, how we distinguish that. Yeah, but you need the big ones. I think it's very important to have them because they, they, they get the customers and they, they get the, the guys who want to innovate. So I'm not excluding them. I'm just saying we have to find the right line between them. And last not least, what came up yesterday and today is the question of branding. Many hubs want to, many centers want to become digital innovation hubs, and I, I get a request every day uh, nowadays, and, and we, we have to ask ourselves the question, do we want 
to have a branding partner of I4MS or part of the Digital Innovation Hub network or something like that or a label. My problem always is what do I do if I think one, how can we evaluate if somebody comes, like assume you get 300 requests. I have no resources to evaluate whether that's a good hub or not. So I would also not have a solid foundation for saying yes or no to, to somebody. So we have to think about how that could be done yeah, and, and what is it worth. So these are the kind of questions that I see here and that we could address, not all of them, but maybe we can get some answers and some on, on this. Okay, thank you, Max. So after this introduction, you are a panelist and have the privilege to sit again. And I think I'll, I'll take these chairs away because it looks so empty otherwise. Okay, and then I hand over this microphone. And the discussion is open now. Moritz, do you want to comment what Max just introduced? Uh, yes, I, th I think what is important um, is that uh, if you look to the next generation, as you can perhaps uh, say the next ge generation I4MS in 2018-2020, I think we need one way or the other try to further uh, expand the outreach of the uh, I4MS to the broader community. And uh, ju just to, to give some figures, um, in Europe there are about uh, 25 million uh, companies. Well, uh, sure, not all of them uh, are uh, highly innovative companies. So the bakers and, and butchers on the street are also there. Perhaps even they could innovate, but let's get them out. Let's, let's focus then on 1% of those uh, 25 million, which is 250 million, uh, 250,000. Well, perhaps 50% will be sensible, touched by ICT. I think it's a lot more, but for, for the sake of argument, 100,000. Then if you look at uh, the I4MS and look at the projects of the I4MS, we are talking about tens of, uh, of companies that are directly touched by the I4MS. I think we, what we need to do is we need to find a way, and I can assure you it's not easy, but we need to find a way to not touch 10, 20, 100, but touch 10, 20, 000 companies. And there might be mechanisms in order to uh, incorporate, it also has to do with the branding, incorporate also other actors that are already uh, establishing uh, those digital innovation hubs by themselves, but also helping them to do that outreach. Why is it important for Horizon 2020, which is a, a more focused on uh, uh, research and development? It creates a, a, a levering and a, a, a demand mechanism uh, for that innovation and development. And that is important to also fuel the uh, digital innovation hubs and the underlying competence center to do actual research development and innovation. And you could think about vouchering. You could think also about, uh, for example, uh, a funding scheme and a European funding scheme that uh, can help SMEs with their application of IFRMS technologies in their companies with the help of those uh, digital innovation hubs uh, 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 competence centers. If you would do that, you create a ref more or less a revolving fund that fuels the research and development and the innovation in the, uh, in the competence centers, but still have a far broader outreach to the community. And then you would, would not be talking about tens of companies, but a hundred or a thousand companies. Maurizio, but what are the main problems of the industry that, that you see? Okay, f f before answering the question, I have a general note which is more technological. I think that uh, uh, I4MS has been a wonderful uh, program, and technologically the focus that uh, we have generated in I4MS uh, is something we don't have to lose. 
So, so cloud, uh, CPS, uh, robotics, uh, photonics uh, are really the key for the evolution uh, of uh, ICT in the small-medium enterprises. And so I think we don't have to lose this focus and we have to keep that. Then to come to your question, uh, when you speak with the, the small medium enterprise, they are always scared about the complexity uh, uh, of making research uh, in, in Europe. Uh, I4MS is, on some point of view, easier than doing research in a different way, so we have to continue that. And probably we have to find a way to, to link uh, with the local organizations to have a sort, as uh, we have been successful in having, uh, in generating local initiatives uh, with the uh, factories of the future, and then we have Industry de Future, uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, Industry Fia Punk Null, uh, we have uh, uh, smart uh, industries in Norland, and so on. We generated a lot of local initiative. We should be able to bring this very successful idea at the, the local level. And uh, uh, I would like, again, to, uh, to use the, the, the number that uh, you, you, you used before, 25 million SMEs in Europe. So if we look at the funding of I4MS, uh, we have uh, practically 4.5 euro each. So this uh, program really deserves uh, to have an order of magnitude of funding more. So we have to find a way to uh, have more funding here because the initiative really deserves uh, uh, what uh, has already uh, done today. And, and then one of the way is try to uh, use local funding uh, and uh, also maybe to further increase the, the funding of I4MS itself uh, on the total of the FOF project. This is something on which we can discuss. So I really think it's a wonderful initiative and so the phase four has to be a preparation of a phase five because this initiative has to, to go uh, beyond uh, Horizon 2020 and to be a reality also for FP9. Luigi, to ask you, what are the core problems SMEs face? Um, well, uh, First of all, I'd like to say that also we, we, uh, we, we support the, the, the work of I4MS. Um, as a federation, I'm here today talking both with my federation, that is Confindustria Innovative and Technological Services, but also Business Europe, that you know that is the confederation of all the uh, feder national federation in, of industry at the European level. Um, we want uh, this strategy for industrial digitalization to succeed and it has to succeed quickly. It has to increase the pace, and I agree uh, with what uh, Mr. Gattilio just said. Um, there is no, uh, still no relations between the importance of this initiative, of this revolution of digitization of uh, manufacturing, and the funds that are, uh, that are uh, given to these initiatives, also the human resources that are given as far as the, the structure of the Commission is concerned. Uh, uh, the people that are working in this are making a, a fantastic job because there are very few to do a lot of things and they've done uh, excellent results. It's been very interesting to, to listen to all the success stories that have been presented. But clearly here we, we need to, 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 to go uh, to make a, a big step forward because I think this is what companies need to see from Europe. Uh, uh, they see about the big programs and the research and development and the difficulties also in participating. And it's true that this is a much simpler way to do it. But it's also an example of how innovation can change the, the way company works immediately in, in the short term. The, the, the success stories we have heard are, are, are the proof that, that things can change also for SMEs. So um, I have a few data that I've collected a few weeks ago before the presentation of the Observatory or Politecnico di, di, di Milano on, on uh, digital industry. 33% of companies know nothing about industry digitization. 33% have only theoretical knowledge. And 34% have done something concrete. Uh, of the ones that have done something, uh, or, or they think about it, they say 45% thinks that is only about sensors and technology applied to production. 45% thinks that is all about software, and only 10% thinks that is about reviewing and or the organization of business models. 
So I think that there is a terrific work that um, I4MS network, perhaps also that could be enlarged also to, to other networks of excellent centers, could do uh, in, in the regions. I think that the approach of uh, the commissioner, Ettinger, that immediately talk about regional digital innovation hub was the right idea, because if we wait for the member states to move uh, based on our experience, it will take ages. Instead, in the regions where the companies are, where the industrial districts are, it is where the action is. Um, and, and by the way, uh, industrial policy in the last couple of years, at least uh, for Italy's concern, has been mainly made in the regions because the national governments don't have money because they have to cut their budgets. So the only money available is European money at regional level. So I think this, that there is where we have to make the difference. Uh, that is where the action is. And I think that these uh, hubs should have a brand uh, based on what exists today, perhaps look at uh, how we could integrate what, what exists, maintain the technology focus that's fundamental because that's the, that's the big uh, know-how that can be given to, uh, to companies, but better networking them also with perhaps a, a, a digital infrastructure, a knowledge-based infrastructure, uh, being able, each one of them, to provide uh, let's say the, 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 the information that the SMEs that wants to innovate need. They don't need uh, only information on robotics, they don't need all the information of IoTs. They, first of all, they need to understand how to change, how to have to change their business models, how, uh, and, 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 and they are entrepreneurs that knock at the door. They are not uh, necessarily engineers or they are people that make business. And looking at what has been done successfully uh, in, in, other, in other places, in, in similar businesses, they can then be interested in making uh, innovations and investments and helping them also to connect to the other um, innovation, innovative companies that are part of this uh, ever uh, large uh, network. So I think that this is, 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 is the mission. The mission has to be enhanced, the resources has to be enhanced, and I think that uh, as federation, we'll have to push the, the commission and the governments to do that. Uh, but also, I think that um, we have to work very uh, strongly at regional level in the territories where there is a, a request for change, anything that I4MS has already a lot of answers to give. So I think that's, that's very important. And again, I want to ask you if you have questions, remarks, want to take part in the discussion. Is there anybody? Still awake enough? Great. <laughs> is it okay you go to the next this, microphone? Uh, yes, <laughs> Thank this you. is a, a, um, a point that I, I was discussing just uh, uh, before already with Max. The question uh, of um, user experience with these new technologies. I mean, um, when we talk about, uh, for instance, a simulation for 24 millions of uh, uh, small medium enterprises, the problem is not to make it them available at a cheap price and pay on demand. The problem is also how this, uh, if uh, how to interface with these uh, technologies. At the last another exhibition, I mean in uh, in um, in April, Bosch was presenting already a plan for uh, um, human. Uh, user-centric digital, uh, digitized processes. They are hiring a lot of uh, uh, user-centric, um, uh, in, let's say, designers, because it's very important once that uh, we are drawing these new digitized processes that are crossing the existing processes inside the manufacturing companies, it is important to design the new interaction of the people inside. So. As many companies are working, like SAP, like uh, Hewlett Packard before, that uh, just uh, showed the importance of uh, the user-centric, the, I mean, the uh, suggestion is to focus on this point. How, I mean, to interact with the new technologies. So uh, a user experience focus at, uh, uh, let's say, competence centers or resources on that. Okay, who wants to react on this? It's my <laughs> turn. It's your turn. If you want, it's your chance. <laughs> okay, so 
so a very, very democratic process like the Brexit, <laughs> but not always <laughs> a democratic <laughs> process are really bringing good things. Uh, okay. Well, uh, it's uh, clear that uh, we are uh, uh, facing something which is going beyond technology. And, uh, and then uh, to, to, to go through that this process uh, has already been pointed out. We have to discuss about uh, a lot of different points, uh, starting from the business model and so on. Uh, therefore, I would say that uh, if, if we look at the digitalization, um, the process has to be first uh, a process which allow all the SMEs to access it. So you, s you spoke about uh, uh, Bosch. Uh, for sure, uh, there are some companies which have already done important investment in Europe about uh, uh, digital platforms and digital solutions. But uh, uh, when we speak with the SMEs, we find a lot of skepticism. So the question is what we have to do to avoid the skepticism. Uh, also, I would like to link on the point that uh, Max raised before about avail available platforms. Available platforms uh, is uh, one point. Uh, the expectation is about an evolution which will be uh, disruptive. Uh, spoke about Watson and uh, for sure also the uh, Google with his uh, neural networks uh, will create uh, something completely different. So it's a very complex issues and uh, uh, as a uh, uh, policy maker, this is not my role but it's more the, the role of Max, the, the question mark is how we have to deal with the monopolies how uh, we have to deal with the, the uh, industrial policies of single uh, strong player on the market and how we have to deal with the need which is coming from the, uh, the, the, the black backbone of uh, 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 European industries, which are basically the SMEs, with a need of something and skepticism on all the rest. So it, it's a very complex issue. I, I don't have answers, uh, but I think that stimulating this discussion will help to, uh, to figure out a possible solution. Somebody else who wants to react on this? I, can, I want to react on the question quickly. And, and I would say, I give a general answer to it. I will not concentrate now on the human-machine interaction as such and the way you do it. But, but when, we, when we see I4MS over the years, we see an evolution, and we see what was innovative in phase one in Fortissimo would not have been innovative in phase two. So something funded under phase one of, you know, of, of uh, Fortissimo, like a simulation with a supplier and a user, pure, simple simulation by an SME, well, today that's mainstream. That's not for a research program to, to, to fund. But combining it with big data or now going to real time, S such things are, inno are very innovative. Same, I think, is on new technologies, new competences that have to come in. One of them may well be human-machine inter interaction. Another one that I see coming also is more and more artificial intelligence coming, coming back, yeah? which was not the case before. Automatically needing more computing power behind you because artificial intelligence only comes when you have mm -hmm. a lot of computing power behind it, the brain, yeah, to that, 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 that computes it. So we see that moving and we, we see innovation, the, the, we see moving what is the digital game changer that we s should support in a, in a research, in a, in a research program. Yeah, and, and that also shows, uh, we will also have to link it to what happens in, in research, what happens in product development by the big actors, for example, what is coming on the market and I think that's very dynamic and changing and we have to, the, our problem a lot is how do we, fr how do I phrase in September with my colleagues what we want to have in two years because it's, it's not always predictable so we have to write our texts relatively generic in order to be able to, uh, to still be up to date in two years from now and still do the right thing into uh, predicted two years before. You want to add something? Yeah, I, I, I perhaps can You're add welcome. something also. <laughs> um, 
About uh, 20 years ago, I was a, po a policymaker at the, at the Ministry of Environment, and we were working on transitions. That was the, the core topic, to change, to radically change the economic system in a way that uh, it, it would be sustainable. And there I was first, that was the first time that I was, uh, 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 I was brought to the attention that policymakers and industry have a, a, a strange <coughs> role in deciding what is good for uh, society. Because on one hand, um, the industry uh, just uh, uh, said to, to me as a policymaker, make the selection. Because if you make the selection, we'll go for it. And then the policymaker, we said, no, we cannot make the selection. You need to make the uh, selection. So how to deal with that? And uh, we then came to the conclusion that it, it is important to have, a, have an important uh, cooperation between those two types of stakeholders. I think uh, that policymakers are there to make the solution, but not uh, not do the actual uh, take the actual uh, uh, decision which uh, technologies are important but facilitate the decision making process and if you then uh, connect it to one of the questions should we have not another technologies etc etc i think um, um, uh, also for the european commission it is very important that you strongly support and uh, facilitate the decision making process but the actual making of decisions is uh, uh, is up to uh, the the industry or research, the combination of research and industry. So let a thousand flowers flourish, but ensure making bouquets out of those uh, flowers. Mm -hmm. Wow! Sounds like a beautiful uh, final <laughs> conclusion and last words. Oh, there's so many other questions there. There are so many other questions, but I'm not sure whether we are all answering all these other questions.